In the book of Matthew, Jesus instructs his disciples, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. Three times in the letters traditionally attributable to Paul, the author counsels, Be not deceived. As an evangelical Christian, you are making a major contribution to America's common good by your continuous and fierce commitment to the defense of traditional family values that are the bedrock of America's stability and upon which America's survival depends. With smug, secular liberal elites in the Democratic Party in mock rejection of traditional family values, you have, for decades, aligned yourself with the Republican Party in the effort to stem the tide of America's glaring cultural decay. And why not? Republican candidates seeking votes from evangelical Christians talk an awful lot about family values. They talk about their opposition to abortion. They talk about their opposition to gay marriage. They talk about their support for prayer in school. And when compared to the Democrats, who mock your values and deride your religion, the Republican candidate can look mighty good. But the time has come when evangelical Christians can no longer be satisfied to have someone in power speak their language. Confining traditional family values to little more than opposition to abortion and gay marriage and support for prayer in school is to strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. The preeminent family value, the one value upon which all family values depends, is the financial ability of a family to have the mother stay home and raise her children, especially during each child's first four or five years. Nothing can replace a mother's love for her children and just a couple of generations ago, one wage earner with no more education than a high school diploma was sufficient to support a family in modest comfort. All the various elements comprising family values are dependent on restoring this devout respect for motherhood. Policies that make a one-income family again possible are the highest form of family values. But Republicans never talk about this. The most important family value is never mentioned by Republicans because family values are in direct conflict with the unfettered market Republicans worship. Because a Republican seeking national elective office must be in the service of big business to receive the Republican nomination, a Republican's rhetorical defense of family and neighborhood, author Christopher Lash pointedly reminded us, cannot be reconciled with their championship of unregulated business enterprise. A society dominated by the free market, in which the American dream degenerates into pure acquisitiveness and self-seeking, has no place for family values. Traditional family values are quickly pushed aside when they come into conflict with the greater value of maximizing corporate profits. The paying of living wages that are vital for family cohesion is pushed aside by Republicans because living wages are in conflict with the greater value of maximizing profits by the employment of cheap labor through outsourcing and uncontrolled open immigration. The removal of nearly all federal taxes, relief of which is vital for family cohesion, is also pushed aside by Republicans because such tax relief would necessitate increasing taxes on the wealthy and the corporations, a measure that is in conflict with the greater value of maximizing profits. Arresting the vulgarity, nudity, violence, and narcissistic value constantly beamed through the vast popular entertainment media at young children 
is pushed aside by Republicans because traditional morality is in conflict with the greater value of maximizing corporate profits. The wealthy and the corporations are the Republicans' master. Money is the Republicans' God. But the Bible instructs that the love of money is the root of all evil. And mothers, being forced into an economic situation where they are unable to fully mother their children, is about as evil as it gets. Unquestionably, the Republican Party's support for unfettered capitalism is as equally destructive to family values as is the Democratic Party's support for secular liberalism. Author Thomas Frank warns us, Republicans may talk Christ, but family values always take a back seat to the needs of money because genuine defense of family values involves challenging the very people who finance their campaigns. In the effort to fool you into believing they are one of you, they will trot out candidates who salivate over an opportunity to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen by evangelical Christian voters all the while forgetting Jesus' instruction to pray to thy Father in secret. They would deceive the very elect by feigning a solemn disposition of reverent prayer in a theatrical con as the Christian candidate to cover their obeisance to the man-made idols of power, money, and fame. Average American Luther Brixton exercises spiritual discernment in recognizing this political trick when he writes in his commentary on an article written by Lawrence O'Donnell, when these clowns clasp their hands together and talk piously of their deep spiritual foundation, it should be a red flag that they are neither honest nor qualified to be president. The serpent never comes clearly identified as a snake. The serpent hides behind the figure of a beautiful man or woman dressed finely and talking sweetly all that we long to see and to hear. But no one can rise to nomination in any political party without first having sold his soul to the devil, the party's wealthy financiers long ago. The founders, not all of them fervent supporters of organized Christianity, nevertheless knew this sinful nature of mortals and eschewed political parties and self-seeking politicians hoping neither would stain the America of their patriotic labor. Genuine family values will never be restored in America by voting for Republican candidates. A change in thought and action is requisite. And that change is that you must viably threaten the Republican Party with loss of your support. We suggest creating that threat is accomplished by affiliation with a budding mass movement for the common good that is genuinely committed to the restoration of traditional family values. To that end, we invite you to seriously consider our presentation entitled Religion and the Common Good. We do not ask that you give up anything to join our coalition, continue to work for change within the Republican Party, continue to donate your time and money to conservative candidates. But when you come to see that the Republican Party is only interested in mobilizing your anger at the destruction of the American family for their own profit, have an alternate plan in place. Under the auspices of Citizens for the Common Good, consider making a pledge to a future citizen presidential candidate of $25 or more and get a Citizens for the Common Good yard sign, bumper sticker, or button. to let your community know there's a third choice blossoming in America. On behalf of Citizens for the Common Good, we hope you decide to join with us because America needs a third choice.